For many years, e-bike motor manufacturers quietly churned out flagship motors with 80 to 90 newton meters of torque and peak watt output of between 500 and 600 watts. That's what the average e-bike rider wanted, right? Then from nowhere, DJI lit the fuse on an e-bike arms race with their Avanox motor's explosive 120 newton meters of torque and 1,000 watt bursts of peak watt output only for Specialized and Bosch to fire back with their own high torque, high peak watt offerings. But now Germany's bike industry, the ZIV, is threatening to slam the brakes on all that clout with a 750 peak watt cap across Europe, meaning DJI and some others would be forbidden from selling their motors across Europe in their current formats. But unsurprisingly, DJI is pushing back, insisting a one-size-fits-all limit would rob riders of the very power they crave. Intrigued? Let's dive into this high-stakes arms race. Hi folks, I'm Jason and welcome to eBike Center. So why is all this necessary, you may ask? Well, under current EU rules, an e-bike is only legally allowed to assist up to 250 watts continuously. Although there is currently no limit to peak watt or torque output. To clarify, peak watt output on an e-bike motor refers to the maximum burst of power it can deliver for short periods, typically used for rapid acceleration or tackling steep hills, beyond its lower 250 watt continuous power rating. Torque output on an e-bike motor measures the rotational force it generates, how hard that motor pushes on the crank or wheel to overcome resistance also crucial for climbing and initial acceleration. Now, Germany's ZIV wants to introduce a change to the current regulation. They wish to continue with the 250 watts of continuous power, but they want to cap peak watt output to 750 watts at the wheel. There has been no mention of capping torque, however. Additionally, they have also floated the idea of creating a separate class for heavy duty e-cargo bikes over 400 kgs. On the surface, this sounds reasonable-ish. Keep things safe, keep things standardized, but understandably, DJI disagree. Stating to start with, this number has just been arbitrarily plucked out of thin air. Cynics might query why this 750 peak watt figure is exactly the same as German companies Bosch's CX motor. In an eight point rebuttal, DJI highlights a few key issues. Firstly, they say there's no solid theory explaining why 750 watts is the magic number. Then they point out that not all riders are the same. People with disabilities, heavier riders, and even parents hauling kids or groceries on e-cargo bikes often need more assistance, especially when climbing hills than other e-bike users. They argue that a blanket cap could leave these groups unfairly penalized. Then there's the matter of smart engineering. DJI argue that their Avinox motor doesn't just crank out big numbers arbitrarily, it actively moderates power, ensuring that their motor doesn't overwhelm the rider. In fact, contrary to the ZIV's ZIV's ideas, DJI has just announced a firmware update that will replace the time-limited boost mode, allowing 1,000 watts to be available to the rider for a longer period than before. DJI also takes a swipe at brands that lock down performance behind software paywalls. No points for guessing who they're talking about here. In essence, they are referring to a motor that's mechanically identical to a top-end model, but the lower-priced version is artificially limited unless you're prepared to pay the premium. That hardly feels fair to riders who just want transparency and genuine choice. So here's the million-watt question, pun intended. How much is enough? Well, the answer really depends on the individual rider and riding context and opens up a whole host of questions. For urban riders, where e-bikes are regulated by EPAC guidelines, 750 watts seems more than sufficient. In these controlled environments, excessive power isn't as critical or potentially as safe since you're not battling steep hills or carrying heavy loads, but you are interacting with traffic and pedestrians. Then, onto e-cargo bikes. On steep incline or when hauling significant cargo, extra power can make all the difference. Imagine an e-cargo bike loaded with supplies. The ability to access up to 1,000 watts in brief bursts makes a noticeable real-world difference. Here, it's not about constantly flicking the power switch to maximum, but using a tailored output to meet situational demand. 
And then there's the EMTB scene, where, where power is the hottest topic on every forum. If you asked a downhill rider whose sole mission is to blast downhill, more watts means faster climbs and more laps. On the flip side, cross-country riders chase minimal weight and natural pedal feel over brute power. And very importantly, particularly in an EMTB environment where both riders, hikers and dog walkers share the same trail space, does an increase in motor output increase the risk of accident? And beyond safety, does the extra output at the wheel strain the trail surface so much that bike park bosses and trail custodians start banning high output EMTBs altogether? And let's not forget the e-bike's greatest achievement, getting riders back on the saddle when age, illness or disability had previously prevented them from enjoying all that cycling has to offer. If we cap peak power, are we capping the possibilities for those who need it the most? Ultimately, enough isn't solely determined by raw watt numbers. It's about intelligent power delivery. Too much power becomes problematic when it leads to uncontrollable acceleration, excessive mechanical strain or a reduction in safety. But if that extra power is carefully managed through smart software integration, then high wattage can translate into an enhanced ride without compromising safety. This debate isn't just academic. There's an industry-wide conversation about whether rigid blanket regulations can truly serve the diverse needs of modern e-bike users. Instead of an across-the-board limit, many experts, including DJI, advocate for a flexible context-sensitive classifications. For instance, e-cargo bikes might deserve their own guidelines separate from those of everyday commuter or mountain bikes. This dynamic approach would allow for innovations that balance excitement and practicality. Advanced features like scene-based power modes and user-adjustable settings offer riders the possibility to configure their bikes to their own needs rather than conforming to a one-size-fits-all watt cap. At the end of the day, it's not just about raw numbers, it's about how that power is delivered, controlled and used responsibly. So tell me, do you think 750 watts is just right? Or does the e-bike world need room to breathe beyond that limit? How do you balance the promise of higher performance with the imperative of safety? Drop your thoughts and comments below. We do love hearing for you, from you even. And thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if we don't see you in store, we will see you in the next video. Cheers.